Hello everyone, welcome to Urban Subnet. In today's video, we will discuss the IP address protocol. Knowing the IP address protocol and how it functions on the network is a must for passing your exams and working in the IT field. So let's get started. There are two versions of the IP addresses, IP version four and IP version six, otherwise known as IPv4 and IPv6. IP protocol is a layer three protocol. IP addressing is used to send data through the WAN and on different subnets in the LAN environment. Every device on the network will have an IP address. The computer or phone that you're using now has an IP address so you can see this video. Your IP address is how YouTube servers know where to send this video feed because your address is your unique identifier for the network device that you're using. Uh, IP address is something that everyone will have to know and have to study to become a good engineer in the networking field. For your network exam, you will need to know some binary math. That is the one and zero, the binary uh, numbering system. Uh, to truly understand an IP address, you're gonna have to understand some binary math also. Here's an example of a dotted decimal form of an IP address. You see the 172.16.10.0 with the subnet mass following the 255.255.255.0. This is called a slash 24 subnet. We also have below that the same address network uh, or an addressing the network that is uh, 172.16.10.5 with 255.255.255.255. This is what we call a slash 32 or a host address within that network. The example of an IP address in the binary form is below here. We had the 172.16.10.5 address uh, written out in binary. So you can see the ones and the zeros, uh, which total up to 172.16.10.5. And that is what the computer actually sees. And it comes in the eight bit separated by dots, which are called octet, octets. So um, once you understand binary math. Don't be afraid. I mean, I was able to grasp it after sitting down with a book and a piece of paper and uh, just going through the books and uh, reading the knowledge and learning about how binary works and how the computer reads binary code. So uh, we're going to get into that also. But right now we're focusing on the dotted decimal form, which is what we all understand which is the 172.16.10.0 uh, with a subnet mass of 255.255.255.0. And um, I'm going to explain to you exactly what that subnet mask means here in a moment. How easy is it to understand a binary numbering system? Well, 2 plus 2 is easier, but that is our first grade math. But the binary system is based on the number 2. An octet has eight digits. Each digit is a bit of information. Eight bits are a byte, or eight bits, eight bits equal a byte. So an octet equals one byte. An IP address is four bytes long and has 32 bits. The bits in an octet are counted from the right to the left, with the first bit equal in one and the last bit equal in 128. In our example here on the screen, we can see that the bit value starting on the right are one through 128. This is on the top row. The row below that shows the one and the zeros of the binary code. One means the bit is on and zero means the bit is off. So now let's add up this string of binary code and see what the total comes out to be. So as you can see here, uh, the first bit on the right is on, so that has a one. The second bit is off, so that's a zero. The third bit is on, so that's a one. The fourth bit is on, so that's a one. The fifth bit is on, so that's a one. The sixth bit is off, so that has a zero. And the seventh bit is on, so that is a one. And the eighth bit, the last and final bit is off, so that shows a zero. So now if you add up all of the bits that are on, you'll start with 64 plus 
16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1 equals the number 93. So with this numbering system here, with these values of the bits, you can have any number from 0 to 255. So that's if all the bits were off, that would be a 0. And if all the bits were on, that would be 255. And with the combination of ones and zeros and ons and off, you can come up with any number between that range. So that's how our IP addresses are formed and how the binary code is used to give us the numbering system that we can use for IP addresses. Now, as you can see, there's a limit of 255. And we'll get into that later of the classes of IP addresses. So there are three classes of IP addresses, uh, class A, class B, class C. And there's also another class that is used ex exclusively for experimentations or ex and development of IP protocols. And we'll discuss that further on in the video. Okay. Let's do a couple of more examples of the binary conversion. As we can see here, we have a chart, and this chart has two examples of binary code. In example one, we can see up here at the top, we have 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. So now when we look at an example down here, the way it says example one, we have the 128 is on. The 64 is on, the 16 is on, the 18 is on, and the 2 bit is on. So these bits are on, so they have a 1 underneath them in example 1. And the bits that are off, of course, have the 0. So when we add up 28 plus 64 plus 16 plus 8 plus 2, we get 218. So that could be the first octet or the first number in our IP address. So let's say we use example number two for the second uh, number in our octet uh, IP address. So we're going to have 128 is on, 64 is off, 32 is off, 16 is on, 8 is on, 4 is on, 2 is off, and 1 is on. So in this example, we have 128 plus 16, plus 8, plus 4, plus 1, that equals 157. So you could write out these first two parts of your IP address, so these first two octets, as 218.157.0.0. And that could be your IP address, uh, or the start of your IP address, or that could be your network subnet, uh, 218.157. Dot zero, dot zero. Now, um, I'm kind of stressing this a little bit because I work in the IT field and every day I have to deal with IP addresses in some form or another. Um, where I work, we assign IP addresses to um, clients. So clients purchase IP addresses. So they might purchase a slash 29 block or slash 28 block. And we have to go into our a system and find out which IP address block or subnet is equal to the size that they want to purchase. And then we assign that to them. And of course, there's some purple paperwork involved in that process. But um, I just want you to know that uh, you, if you get into the IT field, you will be seeing IP addresses almost every day um, in your job function. So I hope that I'm able to help you understand this better. Um, of course, we will do some additional videos on the classes of IP address. Remember, we have a class A, class B, and class C, which are commonly used in networks today. As promised, I'm going to discuss the classes of IP addresses that we have been talking about in this video. The IP addresses shown in our example are classful addresses. Each class has a specific subnet mask. The class A subnet mask is 255.0.0.0. The class B subnet mask is 255.255.0.0. .0 .0. 
and the Class C subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Now, you can see the classes of IP addresses here. We have Class A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, the Class D subnet is used for multicasting, which is how you're viewing this video with a multicast address from the uh, video streaming service. Uh, class E is used for experimental purposes only. And then we have some exceptions down here to class or the 0.0.0, .0, .0 network is used for communication with the local network. The 127.0.0 slash .0 A is your loopback address. So you could actually ping your computer. If you ping 127.0.0.1, most likely your computer's NIC card will respond to that ping. And the 169.254.0.0 Slash so 16 is a link local address that is used for certain applications uh, to assign the computer address. Um, now, the issue that uh, network engineers in the IT community in whole face was that there were millions of small businesses out there that only needed a small network, say of 20 people, 15 people, 30 people, or what we might say com computer hosts. So they just didn't need, you know, 65,000 hosts. So if a business only had 10 employees, it made sense to assign them a class C address. But that's still wasted 244 addresses because the class C has 254 hosts. But if you're only going to use 10, then the other 244 addresses uh, would not be used. So to solve this problem in 1993, the Internet Engineering Task Force released what we call Clusters Interdomain Routing also known as CIDR, and is sometimes called subnetting as well. Now, we have a separate video on CIDR to uh, get you more uh, information on, on how CIDR works and what it looks like. Uh, one of the main changes that CIDR introduced was what we call a variable length subnet mask, which we have been talking about in this video, uh, a slash 30 subnet mask, a slash 28, uh, slash 23, those are all what we call variable length subnet masks. They're not used in the class full mask, like the class A has a slash 8, class B has a slash 16, class C has a slash 24. But with variable length subnet masks, you can break away from that, um, from those numbers. And we have an example here, the slash 30 subnet has two host addresses and this is commonly used in a point-to-point -point connection where there's one device on one end and another device on the other end so you don't have to waste uh, addresses when you just connect in two devices the slash 23 has 512 host addresses which can be used in a medium-sized network larger medium-sized network depending on what is required for that particular network now uh, you at work, I have been asked to, you know, to uh, assign a certain size network. They may say, you know, we have 10 people from the corporate office coming next week. Uh, we need to set up a conference room or something for them. And we want to give them their own network subnet. So your boss may say, I need you to uh, look at our 172.16 network and get me a slash whatever uh, that will accommodate these six um, uh people from the corporate office that are going to be visiting and it'll be your job to uh, find that network and assign it to specific routers and switches in your company. Um, so this is a real world uh, work that you will be doing once you, you are working in the IP field. Um, and then along with that, uh, there's variable and subnet routing. Uh, there's routing protocols that route variable and subnet mask. Uh, so there's a lot to discuss when it comes to IP addresses and the classes and the subnetting and the variable and subnet mask. So we will do more videos on this because this is something that will, you will be working with throughout your career. And this is something that will be discussed throughout our training uh, videos. So in our next 
section, we're actually going to assign some IP addresses to a router and a switch uh, to give you kind of a real world example of how IP addresses work. Uh, so that's going to be in our next section. All right, in this section, we're going to do the um, IP address assignments on the routers here. So we have four routers in this topology here. We got router one, router two, router three, and router four. So we're going to configure on router one, we're going to configure a slash 30 IP address subnet and a slash 24 IP address subnet. That's going to be the slash 30 is going to be between router one and router two. And the slash 24 subnet is going to be between router one and router three. Now on router two, we're going to configure a slash 28 subnet between router two and router four, just to mix things up a little bit and uh, give you a better idea of how these IP addresses can be used. Uh, so we're going to get started here. Now what I've already done is I configured an IP address on router one already. So in order to see what we have configured, we can do the command show IP interface brief. And I'm just uh, doing the shortcuts on this, uh, cutting down the uh, amount of characters I have to type here. So as you can see on gigabit interface 0 slash 0, we have the IP address 192.168.10.1. And if we do the show run interface gig 0 slash 0, we should be able to see that as a slash 30 subnet with the 255, 255, 255, dot two five two and this connects over to router two so we're going to come over here to router two and we're going to do the same thing on router two we're going to so it looks like we're already in the interface so we're going to go ahead and you know, we're just going to come out of there completely so I can show you how all of this is done so we're going to do config T for config terminal we're going to do interface gig a bit zero slash zero. And then we're going to do IP address 192.168.10.2 with the subnet mass 255.255.255.252. And we're going to enter that in and then we're going to do the no shut down command so we can bring the interface up and we see the interface has changed state to up so next we're going to come out of this and then we're going to use the ping command to see if our connectivity is working so we're going to ping to router 1 which is 192.168.10.1 that's his IP address and we see we have a successful ping going across here. So this is simulating a point-to-point -point link. Uh, there's two devices, router one and router two on this connection. So there's only two devices. So we can use a slash 30 and we can save IP address space. In a slash 30 on this particular network, we have, um, we have IP addresses 192.168.10.0 is a network address. Then we have 192.168.10.1 is for router 1. And then we can use dot 2 for router 2. And then we have 192.168.10.3, which is our bar broadcast address. And then the next network would be 192.168.10.4 that would start another network uh, which uh, we're not using that network but just want to see how that that looks um, here so the next IP address we're going to configure is on router 1 and we're going to go to let's see we see the interface came up on router 1 when we configured router 2 so we're going to see here we have gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 and it has no IP address assigned so we're going to configure that one next so we're going to do conf 
And we're going to do config t, and then we're going to do interface gig 0 slash 1. And these are all shortcut commands that I'm using here. And then we're going to do IP address 10.10.10.1. And we're going to do a 24 subnet 255.255.255.0. And on the slash 24, remember there's 254 addresses available. So that's going to be from 10. Dot ten dot ten dot one to ten dot ten dot ten dot two fifty four. So we're going to enter in this command here, and then we're going to bring the interface up with a no shut down command. And now this interface connects down to our router three. So let's see if we can show that here on the screen. This is router three down here below router one. So we're going to come to router three. And bring up the prompt. And when you first log into the routers, you come to what they normally call the greater than sign. So you're going to enter enable. And that's going to bring you to the router pound sign. And then we're going to do a show IP interface brief. And we can see that our gig01 interface has no IP address and it is down. So we're going to do config T interface gig 0 slash 1 IP address 10.10.10.20 because remember we, we can use any of the 254 IP addresses on this side and it's still going to connect because they're going to be in the same subnet and the way we know that is we're going to do 255.255.255.0 which puts this in the same subnet or network as the router one interface. And then we're going to do a no shut down. All right. So the interface has come up. And then we're going to do a show IP interface brief. And as you can see here, we have 10.10.10.20 and our interface is up, up. So we're going to test this again with the ping command, 10.10.10.1. And as you can see, we can ping router one. And uh, we have uh, 254 addresses available, so we could actually add other devices in the same network. Uh, usually on a, on a router, you can only use uh, the interfaces, can only be in one network at a time. So this is one of the cases where I was saying we would be wasting 240, well, a lot of addresses here. We're going to be race, uh, wasting 252 addresses here because we cannot assign um, that network on this router to any other interface. Uh, so that's a waste of addresses. So that's where the CIDR were coming. And we use this CIDR on... Uh, the connection between router 1 and router 2. So now that we have that up, let's go over to router 2 now. And we're going to configure the last interface. And we're going to do that with a slash 28. So we're going to bring up router 2 here so you can see that. So router 2 connects to router 4. And you can see that here. Let me bring this up some. Oops, that's taking it down. So there we go. So router 2 connects to router 4. I just want you to see that there. Router 2 connects to router 4. So we establish connectivity between these two devices and we establish connectivity between these two devices. So now we're going to do router 2 to router 4. And let's go into router 2. And we're going to go show IP interface brief just to see what we have configured already. So on router 2, we're going to do config ping interface gig 0 slash 1. And then we're going to do IP address. And we're going to do IP 172.16.10.0. 
dot five with a subnet mask at two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two four zero. So as you can see, these subnet masks has changed. Uh, in our case, we're changing the last octet uh, because our network is 172.16.10, but we have 254 uh, host addresses that we can use on this end. Actually, we got a slash uh, 28, so we're actually going to have 16 here. But in the slash 24, you have 254, so we're using a slash 28, which gives us 16 uh, addresses. So we're going to enter this command here and then we're going to do the no shut down command and so the interface has come up and that looks good and we're going to come out of here and then we're going to go to router 4 and we're going to do enable and then we're going to do show IP interface brief and no IP addresses are here. So now we need to config T. And we're going to do interface gig 0 slash 1. And we're going to do IP address 172.16.10.10.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
slash 24 uh, to um, be able to supply an address in the same network for all those 200 users. Um, so I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, video that we put together for the IP address and the IP protocol. Thank you for watching my daddy's video.